So if you're in the market for three hundred thousand and up, you have a better opportunity for the property and getting closed and costs and everything paid. Even new builders now are really? paying ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars in lender credits. Today I have the privilege of having Crystal Harris on the show. And Crystal is broker and owner of Harris and Harris Realty Group. Crystal, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. And we're going to talk today about the market. So I know it's changed a lot and a lot of buyers and a lot of sellers aren't up to date on where things are right now. Correct. So to jump in, before we get started, could you give us a little background about yourself and your company? Sure. My name is Crystal Harris. I am principal broker owner of Harris and Harris Realty Group. I have been in real estate a little over six years now. I am a top producing agent, um, and I have about 14 agents under me right now. That's great. Thank you. That's a good size brokerage. And we were talking beforehand about your new, your new building that's about to open yes. up. Yes. That's going to be exciting. Oh my gosh, yes. We're on Union, actually. Um, we're the first black-owned real estate firm in the heart of downtown at 73 Union Avenue. Right. You show me photos. It's yes. beautiful. Thank you. I will be at the grand opening. Please. That'll be great. Awesome. So to jump in, first let's start off. Is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? And what does that kind of mean? So a buyer's market, um, just to break it down in layman terms, mm -hmm. means that they have more sellers than buyers. Right. So there's more homes for sale versus buyers. And then a seller's market is the complete opposite. A seller's market means that there's more buyers than sellers, which makes it a seller's market and in favor to the seller. Right. And the seller's market's what we had. Correct. I mean, it was red hot. Solid. It was yeah. a solid, solid, solid um, seller's market all of 2021 going into the first few months of 2022. Right. And then it started to sizzle down more. So now we're more in a buyer's market. Mm -hmm. However, we do still have uh, properties that are going really fast. So it just right. depends on the condition of the property, the location, um, the price points and all that kind of stuff. So the properties that are um, hot properties, they still have um, their, their privilege to the seller. Right. But in the market that we're in now, we have a lot of things that we have not seen in a long time, like them paying closing costs. Right. Properties are being reduced. And accepted offers are being accepted on lower offer amounts according to the listing price. Right. Yeah. I mean, we didn't see any seller paid closing costs. Absolutely not. At it all. was unheard of. It was, you know, I mean, I saw the opposite sometimes. Non-existent. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, if you're a seller right now, what should you be expecting? If you're going to list your home, you know, previously you might have multiple offers the first day. Mm -hmm. What's it looking like now? So... From my experience, and I do have a six properties listed, and they're all at, they're all on the contract now. Um, so I have seen them stay on the market a little longer, mm -hmm. and that's something that the sellers have been doing a lot of reading. But they're reading old material on uh, really? online, yeah. Okay. So there is a um, a lost perception there with the amount how long the property stays on the market. Yep. Doesn't mean that it won't sell. It just means that. You have less buyers, and because of the interest rates, mm -hmm. the homes that are at the 250 300 and above price point, they have less things to choose from. Right. So if you're in the market for 300000 and up, you have a better opportunity for the property and getting closing costs and everything paid. Even new builders now are really? paying $10,000, $20,000 in lender credits. Really? Mm-hmm. So... You know, what I'm hearing is that it's not dire straits for the sellers. There still are a lot of buyers in the market. Yes. You just be prepared to, to wait a little bit longer than what mm -hmm. they were in the past. Absolutely. And now what played a major part in that is the banks got really creative with their down payment assistance programs. Right. So a lot of people that um, they don't have the funds, they have the credit, they have the mm -hmm. jobs, they, have, they, they qualify to purchase, but they didn't have any money saved up because maybe they deplenished their 401k due to, you know, COVID issues and right. loss of work, uh, shortened hours. So now these banks are getting very creative with the down payment assistance programs. So they're able to purchase homes with no money down. Right. You were, you were telling me about that beforehand, and yes. I was blown away by some of the programs. And I'm in the business, but, yes. you know, I just don't know yeah. all the programs the that are offered. Of yeah. So it's incredible. If you're looking to buy a home, you really should talk to all these local lenders yes. that just have programs that yes. we don't know about. In-house programs for specifically. Regions have a 100% program as well as Pinnacle and really? Trustmark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, those are great local banks. Absolutely. Yeah. We were also talking about beforehand 
property taxes and the yes. impact that that's having on people's mortgages. <sighs> yes. Can you break that down for Absolutely. us? Absolutely. So again, in layman terms, um, so this is strictly um, my professional opinion, mm -hmm. and I wanted to make sure I, I mentioned that. However, um, a lot of people are saying that foreclosures are going to be very active right now. Oh yeah. And the reason why I believe so is because. A property that was originally maybe paid one fifty four, the property taxes were very minimal. Right. Well, if the house sold next door in twenty twenty one when the market was booming mm -hmm. for three hundred, three hundred and fifty thousand, then the property taxes on that house now is is subject to the house next door because it's the property value is what they go by. Right. So when the taxes increase on the property value, mm -hmm. that makes the mortgage go up. So if the if your taxes were originally fifteen hundred for the year annually, then now they're four thousand annually. Your mortgage could possibly go up between three to five hundred dollars a month, and that that's could a big be impact. At a huge impact, and that yeah. could definitely have some homeowners in a disarray and can't afford the change. Right. Yeah, I know my property taxes doubled when they reassessed them all. I think really? it was last year or something. So I understand what you're talking about, yeah. but I never thought about the impact it would have on mortgages and yes. how that could force some people into foreclosure. Yes, because that is a part of your mortgage payment, your property taxes and your homeowner's insurance. Right. Yes. So that's unfortunate. Yeah. And so one last question, sure. kind of going a little bit off track here, okay. but if you're a buyer, mm -hmm. what should you be expecting in this market? I know we talked about getting closing costs yes. and some down payment assistance programs. Mm -hmm. How much flexibility is there on like list price versus what you can offer? So it will depend on the property and how many offers they have. So one okay. of the things that I do as a active agent myself with um, with buyers, active looking, active searching buyers as well, I go to them in my buyers consultations and I'm very clear up front and let them know some properties you can and some you can't. Right. That's where I do my due diligence and I reach out to the listing agent. Hey, I have a buyer. She's amazing. She loves the property. How many offers do you have on the table? Yeah. You ask those questions because sometimes the, the, the agent, the answer. they yeah. can answer them. <laughs> so I don't fear asking questions that I know can benefit my client, whether it could be to their, you know, to their benefit or to the seller's benefit. So right. that's one of the things that I always ask the agent, hey, what is your, what is your seller looking for? What's most important? Mm -hmm. Do they want, what, is it most important for them to get um, more bottom line? Do mm -hmm. they not want to pay, you know, closing costs? So that way I can know how to write the offer up to appease the seller because we can't assume what the seller is looking for. Right. So if I yeah. know the needs and the wants of the seller, it helps me be able to create a attractive offer for my buyer. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. I think a lot of agents miss out on that. That's absolutely They just true. write whatever their buyer fear. says. But it's fear. Yeah. Drafting it according to what the seller all wants. All they can do is say is no. That's right. That's, That's all right. they can say. That's I've good. been very, I've been very um, lucky. Yeah. So I get more offers accepted than not. So. Yeah. I think I'm doing something right. I'm sure you are. Yes. So, final question. If somebody wants to get in contact with you, mm -hmm. right, if they're a seller, if they're a buyer, if they just want to learn more about real estate, yeah. what's the best way for them to get in contact with I you? I have an email at crystal, uh, it's crystal, C-R-Y-S-T-E-L-L, -L, at hhrgteam.com. And my website is crystalharris.com. It's C-R-Y-S-T-E-L-L-H-A-R-R-I-S.com. Okay, great. And we will include a link to both of those in the video description. Awesome. Crystal, it's been great talking it's with you. It's been amazing. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you.